All right, so last time we derived some equations, um, or definitions, just that uh, the angular velocity is equal to the change in angular position with respect to time. And we also had that the angular acceleration is equal to the change in angular velocity with respect to time, as well as the non-derivative definitions. Um, but if you remember from these, we got a set, of, a set of kinematic equations. We got V is equal to V naught plus acceleration times time. And if you remember, these had to be constant acceleration. Hold on, let me write this in red. Constant. And meaning... Right. If they gave us an acceleration, it was just a number meters per second squared. It was not a function of time. So this does not work. And this, these equations that I'm about to list on this left side over here did not work um, if it was 3t squared meters per second squared. Right? Um, it had to be just a numerical value or a constant value. Um, so, what other equations did we have? We had that um, x final is equal to x initial plus the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. And we also had the non-time dependent v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2 times the constant acceleration. All of these are constant. Um, times the change in position, right? That could be uh, x, y, z, anything. Well, we're going to... Let me move these down a little bit. Do, 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 do. For rotations, we have perfect analogous equations. And um, you can drive these on your own for fun if you want. Um, if you need to go back to my initial videos where I derived these equations, go for it. But uh, basically, instead of velocity right here, we have angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity plus the constant angular acceleration times time. So this is a constant um, some number radians per second squared. Okay. And the second equation over here turns into theta final is equal to theta initial, or the initial position, plus the angular velocity times time. And that would be its initial angular velocity. If it had some constant acceleration, we would have the acceleration term as 1 half alpha times time squared. And once again, constant, constant, constant. Just has to be a number to use these equations. Otherwise, you have to go back and, like in the sample problem previously, throw it in the equation and integrate or differentiate. So to get from theta to omega to alpha, we would take time derivatives. To go the other way, um, from alpha to omega to theta, we would integrate that thing with respect to time. Um, and finally, our third equation here becomes omega final squared is equal to omega naught squared plus 2 times the angular acceleration. And then instead of a linear position coordinate or Cartesian coordinate, we're going to have an angular coordinate, so change in position theta. These are our new equations for when something is rotating, um, but this is only when it's a constant acceleration. If it's not constant, we have to come up with our own new equations where omega would be equal to the time derivative of this, or alpha would be equal to the t uh, 
time derivative of omega. Um, most of the problems that we're going to deal with are going to be like uh, like this. We'll be using constant acceleration equations the most. Um, once we get to uh, dynamics level problems or um, my uh, ME242, which I hope I see all in there, um, we are going to end up integrating and differentiating these things more. Um, you can always still integrate and differentiate it and come up with these equations if you want the practice. So if you're that type of person, go for it.